What's up everybody? Couch Mills here coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video and in this video we got to talk about the new experimental Overwatch patch notes that are just completely ridiculous if I'm being honest. It's actually insane that they buffed a lot of the characters that just I, I don't even know. We're, we're gonna break it down in a second so you just gotta watch to the end. But go to that game leap website if you want in-depth advanced tips and tricks that you won't find anywhere else in a scene where there's not many guides you gotta go check it out right now so that you can get the leg up on your competition so go check it out. But without further ado Let's jump into the video. Now we're gonna read the changes, we're gonna read what they have to say about the changes, and then we're gonna talk about it afterwards. First off, Torb, quote, the overload change allows Torb to use overload a bit more aggressively instead of purely saving it for defense. When combined with the rivet gun change, Torb will be able to dish out more damage more frequently, especially at close range. Overload cooldown reduced from 10 seconds to 8 seconds. Rivet gun alternate fire ammo consumption reduced from 3 to 2 per shot. So he's going to be able to use his alternate fire a lot more. And the overload is going to help. Honestly, the alternate fire is not really what you want to be using that often unless an enemy is really low. That being said, it's still a nice change to Torp overall. It buffs him. The overload is a really big deal though. 2 seconds off that is actually a pretty big buff. And all in all, I do think that this is going to make Torb a little bit more powerful. Not crazy overpowered or mix him up in the meta by any means, but he's definitely going to be a slightly more viable option in the spaces he was already good in. Next up, we got to talk about McCree, who actually got a freaking buff, like one of the best characters in the entire game got a buff. All right, let's, let's read what they have to say. Quote, this change to Deadeye allows its faster damage ramping to happen earlier, allow it to be threatening to enemies more quickly than before. This change will help strengthen an ability that is often considered fairly weak compared to other heroes' ultimates. Combo rule can now be used in the air, and it's a nice quality of life change, but it is also a potential powerful change when fighting against heroes with big vertical knockbacks such as Doomfist and Wrecking Ball. So the Deadeye initial slower damage ramping speed duration reduced from 0.8 seconds to 0.5 seconds, so it's going to be able to do lethal quite a bit faster, which is going to make the ult better. Still not amazing, but a lot better, and it's going to catch some people off guard who are not quite used to it. But the combat roll that you can now use while you're in air, that's actually crazy crazy because you can really really get the leg up in a 1v1 like imagine jumping a corner shooting at an enemy and then rolling back behind cover mid-air you can really mess with an enemy they just talked about the doomfist and wrecking ball example where if a doomfist uppercuts you can roll at him you can roll to the left you can roll to the right you can roll backwards i mean the dooms just not gonna be able to kill you like yeah this is sick i mean against wrecking ball it's sick it's very strong it's hard for the wrecking ball to track you if he slams you he's not gonna be able to kill you very easily and he couldn't do that very well before if you had stun and yeah this is really freaking good. Like, I'm not going to lie and say that I don't think that this is not going to feel good on McCree. It's going to feel really good. But McCree is like one of the most powerful characters already in the game. And like the top three, if not the best DPS. And they're actually just making him stronger. Very, very weird buff choices so far in Torben McCree. Not really what I would think the game needs, if I'm being honest, but, you know, for you McCree players, I mean, I play McCree a fair bit myself, so I like this from a non-competitive point of view, but from a competitive point of view, this makes absolutely no sense to do when McCree is already so powerful. Now, next up is actually Mora. Quote, this change allows Mora to get more power out of both their orbs rather than them often just used a portion of their potential before flying away from their targets. Biotic Orb, slowed speed when it has a target, has been reduced from 20 27.5 of normal to 15% of normal. This means when the orb has the target, it's actually going to slow to nearly a crawl when it's next to him, whether it's damage or heals, meaning you can heal that specific target for almost the entire orb, or you're going to be able to damage a target with the entire orb. Which honestly is a pretty good buff for Mora. Mora has a very low win rate and a very low pick rate, especially at the highest ranks. So while I necessarily don't think that she's the greatest to be meta, like I don't think every single character needs to be meta and Mora definitely has created some of the worst metas in the past. I do think that this is a nice quality of life change. I don't think it's going to make her broker or anything. And I do think that it's probably good to buff Mora in some capacity, even if it's a slight one. And I don't think it's going to overall affect her meta pick rate. Now, last up, we do got to talk about Junk. Now, this is such a weird, like, quad of heroes that got buffed, right? Tor, McCree, Mora, and Junkrat. And this Junkrat one is a complete doozy. So, let's break it down. We'll talk about what this means for the game. Quote, the main goal of these changes is to increase Junkrat's overall potential power, especially at close ranges, while weakening his long-range spam potential. Direct hits within 15 meters will now do massive damage, while area damage and long-range direct hit damage will be much lower than before. 
Frag launcher impact damage increase from 40 to 90. Okay. Explosive damage reduced from 80 to 60. Added fall off to the impact damage. Between 15 and 25 meters, impact damage reduced to 20%. 18 damage. Knockback amount reduced slightly. Now, let me get this straight. Impact damage is 90. Explosive damage is 60. So it's going to one tap tracers. You're gonna one tap tracers if you hit them directly. That's freaking insanity. I mean, yeah, the spamming of Junkrat is going to get nerfed for sure. And this is going to be honestly good in a lot of different ways. And the reason I say it's good is because one of the frustrating things about playing against a Junkrat is dying to him or getting rolled by him when he doesn't even freaking see you. He's just spamming very far away. That was kind of Junkrat's niche and they're trying to take Junkrat away from that. And I understand that, but making this direct do so much damn damage, I think is scary for just the potential of Junkrat in that mid to close range to just completely shred. Like, I mean, that's crazy freaking damage. Being able to just rack up like 150s over and over again on somebody, you hit them three times and that's freaking like so much goddamn damage. You're just rocking like 450 damage on an enemy instantly. It's insane. I mean, imagine combining your mines with your primary fire and then getting damage boosted. You're just gonna like, I don't know, almost instantly kill a Reinhardt or anything. Like, sure that takes a lot of resources and you have to be in the right range, but that seems very annoying to deal with and powerful. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they did this. Like, I don't understand. I honestly get the Mora change. Uh, Torb, not really, take it or leave it. But McCree and Junkrat, just out of left field. McCree makes no sense because he's already very strong. And Junkrat in this way, that's just crazy. Like, you know, I, I saw this comment on Reddit that was like, you know, if they're gonna take four months to make a change, like, and then they're gonna drop something like this, just just don't change anything. <laughs> but all joking aside, at least there's something, right? At least there's something mixed up, some new thing, at least. I mean, I really would rather them, if they're gonna be like experimental like this, do it with a ton of characters. Like, you know, in this time frame between now and Overwatch 2, just start fucking moving numbers around on like 10 characters. Like, who cares? Like, I don't know. Why would you do this? I, <laughs> I don't get it. You know what? Maybe some people really like these patches. Maybe four specific type of people like these patches. Now, all joking aside, I want to know what, how you feel about this. Do you think it's a good patch? Do you think it's a bad patch? I want to know your personal opinion about it down below. And get to the Game League website if you want in-depth advanced videos over every single one of these characters. Or if you want some characters that can counter these, we have in-depth advanced videos for those as well. So you definitely got to go check it out if you want to make sure that you can dominate this next meta. Go to the Game League website right now for in-depth tips and tricks. But thank you so much for coming by. I love your faces, and I'll see you next time.